Johnny asks, is there a simple way to see how many people started to fill out a form? I'm trying to figure out. So how many to started to fill out a form? That's the pertinent information. I'm trying to figure out if I get too few responses from an evaluation form because it is too long or if the participants don't even start filling out the form. That's a great question because mm -hmm. I know in other uh, more expensive, more robust tools, thinking like Qualtrics, you can actually go in, you know how many people have clicked the link to get to the form, never filled it out, how many people started filling forms out but d didn't get to the next page, how many people got to the next page, like you've got that granular data so you know when you've lost them. Like how many questions, if you got 20, you know, how many they filled out before the, so, hey, what's wrong with question 15 where everybody bails, that has the highest number, the bail rate. Um, so yeah. what can you do with forms? Can't do that. <laughs> I, wish, Not that. I wish we could. No, I mean, if you've got Dynamics customer voice, you know, where you're doing the, the pro version of forms, that's a little different. But on the standard, no, we can't. Mind you, there's the new functionality around a saved form that's that's coming out. So then you could have it resubmit but the problem is ultimately it submits but then they can go back and adjust it and it needs to be turned you can turn it on or off inside an organization but I still don't think I mean if it was saved at least you'd know where they got up to but you yeah. wouldn't know how many people started well it, it that depends though right because you could do a form and it depends on if you make the fields required or optional if you make them required and they can't save they hit cancel you get nothing Right. Mm -hmm. But if they like your first couple are optional or some of them are optional and they get through those and they actually hit save. Right. Then you're yeah. going to get, you know, any but anything that's required, if, if you got anything required on the form, you're not going to get information them. if they cancel. Right. Yeah. But if you allow if everything is optional and they only get down through four and they hit save, then you're going to only see that they answered four. The right. one thing that I do now on all the forms. Two best practices I would give, if you're thinking maybe they think the forms are too long, break them into sections. Only have like four or five questions, have another section. Four or five questions and have another section. The other thing I do is I show the amount of time it's really going to take them to answer it. If you don't, yes. they're assuming, right? Mm -hmm. So if you tell them, hey, this is only going to take you three minutes and like, okay, so it can't be too many. Three minutes is fine, right? But if you don't put that information and break them up that way, then that feels it's really long. Yeah. And if they're open questions too, do you know, the more open, and especially if you make it required, exactly, but all those open questions, you need to limit, do you know, one, how long it is, two, how many open questions you ask. Is it, can it be asked in a different way? You know, could you break it down and have it that it's more multiple choice and quick and easy for them to work I, with? I, I and didn't then, think I was going to have to write an essay here. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Exactly. And the other thing yeah. is a lot of people make the mistake when it comes to doing, you know, whether it's qualitative or quantitative type analysis is um, they often don't break a question out and down. They've got too many in one field and then have right. it open. And they find that really overwhelming because it's not just a sharp and sharp. It's only if you've got something. If you said no to this and then it might have a branching and then it asks them and then they kind of go, oh, I don't have time to do all of that. But if you make that a required, then you're going to have some problems. People are going to go, it's too much. So it's usually it's because it's yeah too overwhelming. But, you know, yeah. there, there's definitely a science to form creation, Without survey a doubt. creation. And there are people that do that for a living and, and write tests yeah. and and put those things together. One other thing I was gonna add though, I think is also a best practice that because it is very limited, but you are trying to identify, let's say you have off of a website, off of your site, whatever it is, um, uh, to, to point people to that form in the first place. You can also put a tracking URL on that. So you can track how many people clicked on it to get to the form. Does it tell you whether sure. they, they, if they clicked through over to the forum and then never started, because I know, hey, 100 people clicked on the forum, but only 25 people filled it out. It doesn't tell you what happens in between, um, mm -hmm. but at least you that's another data point you can look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got a few links. Having done lots of forms training, what I'll do is I'll put a couple of different links of different things and why the different types of survey questions, why you use them, why you would use... Yeah. yeah, that's and great. I, I do a session on how to 
put a form together so it does not seem like it's a you know yeah. overwhelming so it seems like it's very quick and brief even though maybe you ask 20 questions but it doesn't seem like you're asking 20 questions yeah yeah so yeah yeah so. i mean well <clears throat> they got to keep their language really simple and specific mm -hmm. um is a big one um they should uh, avoid a leading question because then it's going to come out a little wrong yep. um one question one idea which i've kind of touched on um try not make it long and make them mobile friendly because a lot of times they get to them on their mobile and they'll start <laughs> it from their mobile phone if it's not mobile friendly you'll often really lose them on a mobile phone yeah. so you know double check in forms and have a look at it on a mobile phone and um and yeah you know split the ideas multiple questions split them out you make it simple and open-ended sparingly one is my of really that, big yeah one of the biggest ones i have found and i don't know if you've experienced this too but you know when you have the option for other and if someone selects other then you can write in the other yes, people don't realize it. that that's how it works so they leave mm -hmm. off the other and then they ask another question if you answered this mm -hmm. or blah blah mm -hmm. you know whatever um type of scenario i there mm -hmm. was a form that I did for a client, they had me review it and I removed 10 questions just because they could use the other option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, the it's other like thing Weight is, Watchers for MS Forms. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. It really, that's it really is. Topic. And things like photos and logos and all that, so they take up a lot of space. So it makes it look much bigger than it is. So try and avoid lots of images and things that take it, you know, um, and make sure you're testing it first before you even send it out and know the limitations too. Um, you know, because that can make a, if you don't know the limitations of forms, then you're going to have some problems as well. I think question order is also very important. So that yep, goes very, with testing too, is going through it like, oh, hey, this makes more sense here. Well, you know, mm -hmm. it also, when you do that, when you really analyze the questions themselves and then the order, you realize I didn't really need this question because yes. ultimately if they answered this and this, then I know this, so. Yeah, repeating, repeating yourself too, a lot of the time. So I see a yeah. lot of that repeat type questions where it's I mean it's fine if you're doing a psychological you know kind of behavioral where you're asking the same thing in different ways <laughs> but on a standard you know business type survey you don't